So is everybody ready for church? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Does everybody know what my name is? Oh, I heard it. I heard it a few times. So, so I know there's people that have been here before that have seen it. Yes, I am Oscar. And, and I'm a child of God. So are you. What a wonderful thing, huh? He blesses us so much. And just between you and me, and the Lord, keep on blessing us. We like it. Yes. Today we got Gary Ballou. Give me Pat, giving a good message to us, like we always get from his wife Mary. She's got control of the board here. My wife, Laura, she keeps me in line. But it's a hard, hard job. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Oh. Yeah. Bless you, sister. And John McFarling back there, I'd like to thank him again. And I just can't quit thanking him, but he does all the music, C CDs, all the music for you guys, and he does an awesome job. Really proud of him. And he blessed me with a steel guitar last January. Nice. So, wow. Yeah. It's nice. Okay, well, let's get her going here. It's a beautiful Sunday, right? Sunday morning, up with the light. I think I'll take a walk in God's park. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. So high. High, high, it's a beautiful Sunday. This is my, my, my beautiful day. And when he said, 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 Jesus said that he loved me. Oh, my, 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 it's a beautiful day. Now I've got someone waiting for me. I know he's waiting patiently. So hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. Get those hands in the air, ready? So high, 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 it's a beautiful Sunday. This is my, my, my beautiful day. And when he said, 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 said that he loved me, oh my, 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 it's a beautiful day. Well, after church, we'll follow the sun, sharing Gary's message with everyone now. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. One more time. We sing hi, 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 it's a beautiful Sunday. And this is my, my, my beautiful day. And when he said, 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 Jesus said that he loves me. Oh, my, 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 it's a beautiful day. Oh, my, 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 it's a beautiful day. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful day. Here's Gary. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Good. Excellent. Good to see everybody here, ladies especially. Thank you. And uh, Oscar didn't do it today, so uh, I don't want you all feeling bad, but usually he says, you know, all the beautiful people are here at this time. And uh, he is, all of course, correct. All the beautiful people are here. You're right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's uh, start this out in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday, and thank you for the time we get to spend with each other worshiping you, Lord. And uh, just be with us in our fellowship and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gary. You are good looking people, I gotta say that. I guess. Wow. Here's a song called Do Lord. Okay? Oh, do Lord. 
Oh, you Lord, you remember me. You Lord, oh, you Lord, oh, you remember me. You Lord, oh, you Lord, you remember me. Way beyond the blue. Well, I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Ooh, I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the moon. So I took Jesus as my Savior. You take me too. I took Jesus as my Savior. Take him to. I took Jesus as my Savior. You take him to. Way beyond. Oh yeah, calling you that. <laughs> do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. Way. Beyond the blue, we'll go to the last verse one more time. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you, you gotta write that by monster. While he's calling you. On that speed, we'll go right into this one. Of this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I did under the bush, you know. I'm gonna let it shine. I did under a bush, you know. I'm gonna let it shine. I did under a bush, you know. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine over the whole wide world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine over the whole wide world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine over the whole wide world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. A word I'm gonna little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Yeah, we'll let it shine. Well, just a couple of announcements uh, before the offering and our regular Sunday worship times for this month are 8 30 10 30 and then five o'clock tonight there pardon Turn your mic on. how's that yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay a few announcements today <laughs> uh, at the five o'clock service tonight there may be a baptism we don't know it depends if uh, our guy shows up or not uh, so that's up in the air. 
Monday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, Bible, women's Bible study at Jackie's house, 4.30 in the afternoon here at, at the church, uh, women's Bible study. Thursday morning, prayer with the pastor here at the church at 10. Thursday night, home group Bible study at Mary's house. And then in two weeks, count them, two. Uh, we are going to have, after this service, we're going to have a soup, salad, and dessert potluck. So hopefully you can all make that in uh, two yes. weeks. Yes. You like that. So, is there, am I missing any? Christmas carols at the Quill Run RV Park on the 27th, uh, when? Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Good time to have Christmas carols, right? Christmas Eve at the uh, Quill Run RV Park. And birthdays. Any birthdays today? December birthdays. I have one. <laughs> Jesus has one. Well, there you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and me. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Uh, dear Lord, thank you once again for uh, bringing us all together. Pray that you'd just be with us. Thank you for all of your uh, provisions that you've made for us. And as we... Uh, Take up this offering, Lord, we just pray that uh, as we return just a little bit of what you have blessed us with, that we can use it for your honor and for your glory and spreading your kingdom, Lord. And just be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got comments. We got trumpets. From common sinners and lovers, we got losers. We got winners, backsliders and amenities, and the preacher talks about God's word, singing, mm -hmm. I love this church, I love this church, it's my kind of place, and just walking through that front door, puts a big smile on my face. Not too far. Come as you are. Mm -hmm. My little mistress. We got t shirts. We got rednecks. We call the boys and high techs. We got ropers. Some eight stopers. Even a few 12 steppers. And as a band played, we all stand and worship the Lord. Again, mm -hmm. I love this church. I love this church. My kind of place. And just walking through that front door puts a big smile on my face. It's not too far. So come as you are. Mm -hmm. I love this church. Sing it. I love this church. I love this church. Right. Here's a little tune called Jesus is a Soul Man. Now Jesus is a soul man. Jesus. Is a soul man, Jesus is a soul man, and I'm sure sold on him. Well, they say that he's a square, but Jesus ain't nowhere, but I know better. He lives in my heart, cause Jesus is a soul man. Let me tell you now, Jesus is a soul man, Jesus. Is a soul man, Jesus is a soul man, and I'm sure sold on him. Now you can find him in the Bible pages, 
that Jesus is a rock of ages. He had me in a cliff of a rock. Jesus is a soul man. Sing it with me. Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. And I'm sure sold on him. Now he calms the waves when the storm is raging. He keeps me safe when the devil's raging. His staff is my sword and my shield. Jesus is a soul man. Yeah, now Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. And I'm sure the soul on him. One more time now, Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. Jesus is a soul man. And I'm sure the soul on him. You know I am. I'm sure the soul on him. Jesus is our soul man. Yes, I mean, you had to give, what would you like to be the father to have to give up Jesus? Mm. But he did it for us. He did it for us. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me Tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in that tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble, were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they rolled the stone away? Were you there when they rolled the stone away? Oh, sometimes it called me to tremble, tremble. Tremble, were you there when they rolled the stone away? Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Hallelujah. Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Yes, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there? They crucified my Lord. Oh, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, I need some voices right after the start here. I'm going to raise a hallelujah three times and then we'll go into the song, okay? Okay. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. One more time. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. 
always hold you Loud in me and believe I'll breathe the hallelujah. My weapon is my melody. I'll breathe the hallelujah. Heaven comes about me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my voice roar. Up on the edges. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. Three times. <coughs> I the hallelujah. I bring the hallelujah. I bring the hallelujah. Thank you. With everything inside of me, I'll raise the hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. Yes, I'll praise the hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I'll praise the hallelujah. Here you lost your hold on me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Bowing and loving. Gonna hear my praises grow Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive I'll raise a hallelujah Hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah Hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah Hallelujah Thank you Well, not after that. Is there something? <laughs> Is there more in here? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did it. That was a hip hop one. Okay. That's always a good song, isn't it? Yeah. What is the one that, remember, we could stand up if we want? Remember, it's like a hip hop that you played last week? Uh, Old Church Choir? Which one? No, not that one. It was kind of towards the end, where you stand up and you. Oh, you I, stand I up and you go. Laura, <laughs> huh? what was it? I think it was not the old church choir. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. Yeah, was yeah. it that? I think so. Yeah. Look, hey, look, look for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, give me a second here. I got to find this a good one. Yeah, I it like that one. one. Bible and it's pretty like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's like the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can lose it, cause there ain't nothing going to steal my joy, no, there ain't nothing going to steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. i got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart of a calling because I've been restored. And there ain't nothing going to steal my joy, no, there ain't nothing going to steal my joy. Now in the valleys that I wander, turn to mountains that I can't climb. Oh, are you with me? Never leave me, cause there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy, no. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation in it. 
people. I got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. And there ain't nothing going to steal my joy, no. There ain't nothing going to steal my joy. Clap your hands. Stop your feet. Tell you feel the thank God for me. Because he's all you ever need. You know he's all you Clap your hand, clap your feet, tell you find that gospel beat, cause he's all you ever need, he's all you ever need, I got an old church choir singing in my soul, I got a sweet salvation in a beautiful, I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy, no. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy, no. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Well, once again, how's everybody doing today? Beautiful. Beautiful. And God is? Great. He is great, isn't he? He is absolutely amazing. Who is that? Oh. Hey, so anyway, uh, I've only got one garage marquee sign left. And uh, so, Colonel, don't be too despondent over that, please. And since it is my last one, please uh, be gentle. Uh, don't be too judgmental, and that is the sign found on the marquee, frog parking only. All others will be towed. Okay. So, to try and fix that up just a little bit, you know, it's always interesting what you find printed in some church bulletins. And some of these dear ladies that type up the bulletins, you know, you really got to love them. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the announcements in the bulletin was the fasting and prayer conference includes meals. That's pretty true. Well, I'm glad we suffered through that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's a lot of things you know, we run into in life. There's a lot of uh, descriptive words, different uh, applications for different words, and one of the words is power. And uh, from uh, those of us in the old school, you know, we like the power of the muscle cars. We like horsepower. And, but there's a lot of different kinds of power out there. And Webster's says the definition of power is the ability to act or produce effect. Now. We know that in a lot of the messages that uh, are given here, there's been times, you know, when we talk about prayer, God, Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and, of course, the power of the Scripture, which is God's Word. But what does the Bible say about uh, how much power the Christian has? The Tyndale Bible Dictionary defines power as the ability to do things by virtue of strength, skill, resources, or authorization. And where do you think the authorization comes from for the spiritual power? From God. Through the Holy Spirit. And as such, as believers, we're never without the riches of uh, God's grace, mercy, and power to meet the needs of those that we run into, that we have contact with. Now sometimes, perhaps many times, the situations in our life look a little less than pleasant. They can uh, feel overwhelming sometimes. And especially, you know, when we look to ourselves to try and fix a problem, remedy a problem, or try and get through different situations. And in situations like this, we can certainly feel less inadequate in trying to deal with things or handle the situation, or to handle challenges. But let's take a look at one verse that gets used a lot, and that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And you find this verse in a lot of places. 
And anyway, the verse says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And there's a lot of truth to that. This is a verse that's been quoted millions of times. It's been used as platitudes. You see it on uh, banners at ball games. You see it on t-shirts. You see it on coffee mugs. You see it on towels. You see it on window, window stickers. This is a verse that you find in a lot of different places. But has it been used as a platitude? Has it been used as an advertisement, if you will, for so long in so many different places that it's lost its power or, or that it's lost its message? Well, let's certainly hope not. Hopefully it's not a verse that uh, you, know, you stumble into every now and then and you just recite it without putting any thought or meaning into it. Sometimes that's easy on different verses. Now keep in mind here that it is Christ who strengthens us. It's nothing that, that we do ourselves. It's nothing that we can do. It's Christ who strengthens us and enables us to do all that is in his will. Keep that in mind, in his will. This certainly does not mean that he is putting into our hands unlimited power to do what we want. There's a lot about God's power, and we have to realize that it is a Christian, that the Christian's power is not our own. The Christian's power, the believer's power, comes from God, through the Holy Spirit. Now, take a look at the story in Acts 3, and I don't think we're going there. But anyway, in Acts 3, when Peter and John encountered the lame man at the temple gate, this man had been lame since birth and was begging for money. And, of course, Peter and John didn't have any money. But after being with Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit, they realized what they did have. They had the power and the strength through Jesus Christ to heal this man. And that is what they did. Not with their great knowledge or strength or for their own glory. They did it for God's glory. They didn't heal this man to impress everybody that did see it or was going to hear about it. They didn't do it to show their greatness because they didn't have anything because everything they had came through God, came through Christ. And in verse 8, this guy really should be an example for many of us who have overcome difficulties, obstacles, uh, just some really trying times in their life. Because so many times what we run into in life through difficulties, through trials, through suffering, through stuff that we don't understand, oftentimes, you know, we'll turn to God. Some people will turn to God just as a last result. But we come through it, and when we re re uh, realize what God has done for us, can we use him as an example? Take a look at Acts 3, verse 8. When something good in our life happens, are we quick to praise God? Are we quick to give God the glory for what happened? In Acts 3, 8, he says, this lame man, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them, into the temple gates, walking and jumping and praising God. So again, you know, when, we, under, when uh, we go through a time in our life, when we have prayed and God's come through for us, do we, are we as quick to give God the praise as we were to go to him in the beginning? When we use the help of the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus or the resources that God has given to help us, and to help others, it is to praise God and to bring others into the family of God. And one reason why we want to do that is because we want to share the experiences and the love and the power that God has given us, and we want to share that with others. Even when we have nothing in ourselves to meet a need, we always have Jesus. Look at how many times in Scripture we've, where we've read his hand's always outstretched for us. He's always there for us. But do we acknowledge him? We should. In Acts 2 and in Romans 10, 
We're told to call in upon the name of the Lord, which requires a lot of faith and a lot of belief. The outcome is amazing. And as we've talked about before, the more you know about the Lord, the better you know his name, the more you spend time in his word, the more comfortable you will be to call on that name at all times. Not just the bad times. Pastor Dennis had a good message today. Too bad you missed it. And that is, he was using the lock on the back gate as an example. And unfortunately, it's a combination lock. And it's hard to see in the dark. And that's when he was trying to unlock it this morning. And he tried and tried and tried and couldn't get that lock to snap open. And he said, God, will you help me with this? And the lock fell open. Now, I use, we use that as an example, though, because do we only call on God? Do we only pray to God? Do we only open the scripture when life is the pits? When things just aren't going our way? Well, hopefully not. You know, it should be something that we're doing all the time. But also remember, God's always there, right? He's always with us, whether we call on his name or not. He's there. But it's a good reminder that we can use him for the simple things in life also not just those times that are trying or difficult. We can call on him all the time for anything. And if you know his power the way the apostles did, you'll call on his power to help you. You'll call on his power to help others. If you know his mercy, you'll call upon his grace to save you. If you know his wisdom, you'll know that he knows your difficulties and can help you through them. He'll help you through anything. And let's take a look at Matthew 10.1. Jesus called his disciples. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. That's quite a bit of power that he unleashed there, isn't it? The disciples had no power on their own to do this. And after all, you know, these disciples, and what disciple means is they were students. They were students of Jesus Christ. He was teaching them the power and the authority. He was teaching them that it came from him, not from somewhere inside of them. It's not something that they did on their own. And we, too, have the same power and authority through Jesus Christ. But the name of Jesus is not a magic word. It is given to Christians as a means to come to a point, to come to a decision that is going to bless God and bring honor to God. This power that Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit gives you is not a means of bringing trivial or your ungodly uh, matters to fruition. You can't call upon the power of God, you know, asking him for a winning lottery ticket. Probably ain't going to happen. We do not call on the power of God to exploit people or for entertainment. When we use his name and his power, it's a pretty serious thing. But we have to remember, he's the one that's glorified, not us. And Christians are instructed to call on Jesus' name for protection, comfort, and above all, to serve others. Now, do you know that you have the power to overcome Satan himself? We've heard some uh, testimonies in here before to where in different uh, gatherings or different settings that there was a couple of people that actually could feel an evil presence in the room. And they called upon the power of Jesus Christ to rid that room or rid that person of the evil spirits. It does happen. That's the kind of power that Jesus Christ gives, that the Holy Spirit gives. In James 4, 7, the Bible says to, let's look at the second part first, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Holy Spirit God will give you the power to resist the devil. But look at what the first part says, and this is very valuable. Humble yourselves before God. You can't go to God being proud, prideful 
and full of yourself because you ain't got nothing. Anything that we do have comes from God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. The power, the strength, the comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. Because if we were all that in a bag of Doritos, we wouldn't even need to call on God, would we? We could do it ourselves. So keep in mind, you cannot just throw God's name around willy-nilly. Who's from the Midwest and understands that? All two of you. Okay. Well, some of you ain't being honest. But always remember, we always... And not only every, in our day-to-day -day life, we should be humble. But especially when we go to God for strength, when we go to God in prayer, we should always be humble. We need to remember who we are, where we came from. Now, a case in point is this next part, which is very interesting and enlightening. So, when you have some time, open your Bibles up to Acts chapter 19. Because remember, we're nothing without God. We're nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. It's Him that gives us the power to do things. Now in Acts chapter 19, we read about the sons of Siva. Now these guys, there were seven of them. These guys were some religious uh, fakes. And they were going from town to town, making money by casting out demons. But they were very impressed by the Apostle Paul whose power to drive out demons came from God through his Holy Spirit. Not from witchcraft, like the sons of Siva were practicing. And that God's power was obviously more powerful than their own. The sons of Siva knew that. They recognized that. So they tried to duplicate what Paul was doing by calling on the name of Jesus, by calling on the name of Paul to cast out demons. They tried to du duplicate that. But what's really uh, interesting about the story is that when they tried to duplicate it on driving out a demon from this possessed man, the demon wasn't going to have no part of it. The demon said, I understand. I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. But who are you? We read several times in Scripture that even the demons know Jesus Christ. Even the demons know God. Even the demons recognize the power of God. But remember, they said, who are you? The demon did. Now, it, was, uh, it seems to be apparent that the demon was a little peeved at these boys for trying to duplicate what Jesus and Paul were doing. The evil spirit was so ticked that in verse 6, uh, let's take a look at Acts 19.15. And it says, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? So this is when the spirit-possessed man turns the tables on the seven sons. In verse 16, the demon-possessed man jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So they got their revenge, if you, or he got his revenge, if you will. Now, hopefully these guys learned a lesson from this in that they cannot call, we cannot call on the name of Jesus Christ if we do not know him personally. We must always remember that the power to change ourselves, the power to change others, comes from, from God. It can't be tapped into by reciting his name or using it, uh, his name as a magic charm or a chant. And these guys, these seven sons of Siva, they did not realize that the power over demons belongs only to Jesus and to Jesus alone and those that he gives the power to. For a little bit of enlightenment, we'll go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, for an important insight. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But first, we have to remember where the light came from, from God. We have no goodness in us that didn't come from God. 
and we don't have any light, any light in us that God didn't give us, and we have no power in ourselves to help others or ourselves. But if we're a follower of Christ, if we are walking daily with him and doing his will, we are given all the strength that we need and the power that we need to help others that he leads us to. Dennis also this morning used the example of when uh, him and Des were at the restaurant. He had to wait to get a table. Then once he got the table, he also had to wait to be served on. Obviously, there was other people leaving. There were people coming. But uh, because of this, there was a lady that he noticed sitting at another booth, and he was able to uh, you know, definitely bring a blessing into her life that day. And we have to remember that Oftentimes, the people that we run into, no matter where it is, the reason we ran into them was because God put us there together. We may not know why at that time. We may not ever know why. But we never know that when we can use you know, God and the Holy Spirit to bring a blessing to others or to help somebody out, even you know, whether they realize it or not. But keep that in the back of your mind also that the people that we run into, God may have put us there on purpose. Don't blow it. But then also if we remember what uh, God's greatest commands were, to love one another, we won't blow it. And we can be in the prime spot, have the prime opportunity to bring a blessing to somebody else. Let's make sure that we never get too big for our britches because oftentimes we are the only tool that God will use in that situation or for that person. And we should be honored and privileged to be used by him and for him. And God's power is so great and so wonderful and beyond our comprehension that we need to take a look at Ephesians 3, verse 20. And this one is, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish, now get this, infinitely more than we might ask or think. Now remember, there's a lot of times we'll call on God because of a concern of ours, because we want to help somebody else. We want to get somebody through a certain situation or a trial. Remember, just talked about we can always call on God for anything at all. And like this verse says, we don't know the extent of God's power. And this just is a reminder that infinitely more than we might ask or think, sometimes you might think, I am not going to ask God for that. I am not going to pray for that because it is too this this item, whatever it is, is too minute. It's too trivial to even bother God with. Believe me, God's our friend. God's our Father. We're children of God. He wants us to ask. He wants us to talk to Him. have to remember that uh, the divine power is at work in Christians to do far more than we can ask or conceive. There's a lot in us when the Holy Spirit empowers us, when God gives us the power, that we can do more than we think we can. We have the ability to do a lot more than we think we can. We have the ability to lose our train of thought. <laughs> And sometimes, as time goes on, the ability to lose one's train of thought is a little more common than uh, we would like. <laughs> but anyway, God gives us, again, through the power of God, God gives us the ability. He gives us the strength. He gives us the skill. He gives us the resources and the authority that far exceeds anything we can imagine. Are we prepared to tap into it? Are we uh, afraid to take that first step in sharing the gospel with somebody else? Or sharing the good news with somebody else? Or sharing God's love and comfort with somebody else? 
We have the power to do that. Sometimes, it gets, uh, especially at the beginning, it's a little embarrassing. But you can do it. <laughs> especially if you ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill you and help you through this. He will get you through it. Because there's one thing to keep in mind, and nothing compares to his great power for us. He loves us. He wants to empower us. And again, it's for his honor and for his glory, and it should be a blessing that he can use us to do this. As believers, we have a tremendous reason to be happy and excited. As the Bible says, a Christian's power supplies all that we need for a holy life in this world, in this world of sin. And sometimes we need a whole lot of his power to get through some things, to be able to resist uh, Satan, to be able to resist the worldly things that want to drag us back to where we once were or into a situation that we once experienced. He wants to empower us to do that, to be able to uh, stay away from that. It's not on there, but 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 tells us that God has and had given us everything that we need for living a godly life when we came to know him as our personal Savior. And if we try and keep that in the back of our mind that we have the power to live a godly life because of the gift of salvation that he gave us, it certainly can empower us or strengthen us to stay away from places where we know we shouldn't be, to think things that we shouldn't think. It will empower us when we know that we have Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. <clears throat> that is a great fortitude for us to protect us from the influences that uh, are negative in our lives. Through God's power and love, we are assured of receiving comfort in times of trial. It doesn't mean it's going to remove the trial. It doesn't mean, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's going to remove the uh, anguish and the heartache that you're going to be going through. But he will give us the comfort we need to survive it. He will give us the comfort we need to get through it. Through God's power and love, we're given the strength and knowledge to resist the temptations of the world. And some days those temptations can be rather strong. Call on the power of God. God's, provi God's power provides everything we need. Here's the key. If we use it. As Christians, as believers in Christ, this power is available to us all the time. And if you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this power is not available to you yet. But if you will accept him into your heart and ask forgiveness of your sins, God's power will be ready for you to call upon at any time, anywhere. The key is, is accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So you too can experience the power of God, to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's always our hope and our desire that if there's anybody here that has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, to come forward and we will pray with you. There.
so I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, <coughs> offering all to me. Jesus, your oldest heart is living for. Offering all to me, Jesus, this heart is living for you, Lord. Broken, I run to you, cause I know you're satisfied, and I know. All this life I have needs to be by your side. So I'll come to you. You know I'll come to you. Falling to my knees. I'll bring all. This heart is all for you, Lord. Jesus, this heart is living for you. For you. Boy, God is amazing, isn't he? And uh, God himself and the angels are really dancing big time today. Five more names in the book. Five more names in the book of, uh, in the book of life. And uh, it's going to be so awesome, the comfort that God will bring. Just have to call on his name and have faith and belief in him. Is there anybody else? If not today, it's a simple prayer that, uh, you know, one just needs to pray, you know, to God, asking forgiveness of your sins, have him enter your life, and give you the gift of eternal life, which he always promises, always has promised. And again, call upon the name of the Lord. Ask for his uh, help, his comfort, his strength, and he will be there for you. God is good. Oh, he God. is amazing. Thank you. Let's stand. Dear Lord, we thank you to, for today. We thank you for another beautiful morning. We thank you for these ladies that have come forward, Lord, to accept you as their personal Savior. Bless them. Keep your hand upon them. Show them your love and your comfort, Lord. As we leave here today, we pray for everybody's safety. And thank you for the blessings that all of these people have given by being here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.